Hello everyone, this is Huzo Rose and Sarasa and I am back again with another video. This time, it is quite similar from our previous report, which is the terms and definitions related to fiber optics. Today, the topics that I am going to present are all about the three types of antennas and are again based on my first name, middle name, and last name initial letters. So, without further ado, let's begin. So we are given a list of uh, antenna from A to Z. So here is an overview of the topics that I will be presenting. First in line is the turnstile antenna. So the turnstile antenna is another type of, turn, of uh, array antenna. So the shape of this array symbolizes the turnstile which is used at the entrances of few places. This antenna has a wide variety of military application. So the frequency range in which the turnstile antennas operate is around 30 MHz to 3 GHz which belong to the very high frequency and ultra high frequency bands. Two identical half-wave dipoles are placed at right angles at each other, uh, to each other and are fed in phase. So these dipoles are excited 90 degrees of phase with each other. Turnstile array can also be termed as crossed dipoles array. So these images uh, illustrate turnstile antennas. To provide high directivity, uh, several turnstiles may be stacked along a vertical axis and are faced as shown in these images. The polarization of these turnstile antennas depend upon their mode of operation. So the pair of such dipoles frequently stacked is known as bay. B -O. In these uh, images, two bays are spaced half wavelength or a lambda over 2 apart and, are cursed, and the corresponding elements are fed in phase. So the radiation produced by the combination of bays results in better directivity. So, the following are the modes of operation of a turnstile antenna. So, in normal mode uh, operation, the antenna relates horizontally polarized waves which are perpendicular to its axis. While in actual mode of operation, the antenna radiates circularly polarized, um, along, uh, polarized waves along its axis. In example, par parallel to its axis. For circular polarization, the transmitter radiating with right circular polarization should have a receiver with the same right circular polarization and vice versa. If it is left circular polar polarized one, unlike the transmitter, there will be a severe loss of gain. So, the radiation pattern uh, will be similar to the radiation pattern of two superimposed dipoles. Though it is close to omnidirectional pattern, it leaves a clove leaf shape pattern. So this figure shows the rotational pattern of a turnstile array. So the typical figure of eight patterns were combined to produce a nearly circular pattern. Figure A shows uh, the individual patterns being combined. Figure B shows the vertical pattern of single bay and also the combined pattern of four bays. So, figure C shows the resultant combined pattern of four bays showing better directivity. Okay, so the advantages of turnstile antennas are high gain is achieved by stacking and better directivity is achieved. While the disadvantage of the turnstile antennas is that the radiation power is 3 decibel below the maximum radiation of a half-wave dipole radiating the same power. So, the, app, the following are the applications of turnstile antennas. So, it is used for VHF communication, FM and TV broadcasting, military communications, and satellite communications. Okay, so next is the cast grain reflector antenna. So, cast grade antennas are antennas which are constructed the style of a mirror telescope the same of the same time. Or of the same name, rather. So, 
on in telecommunication the radar uh, in tele telecommunication and red radar use a cast green antenna is an antenna in which the fed radiator is at or near the surface of a concave parabol paraboloidal main reflector and directs to a convex hyperboloidal subreflector. Both reflectors have a common focal point. Energy from the feed illuminates the secondary reflector, which reflects it to the main reflector, which then forms the desired forward beam. Okay, so the advantage are the fit radiator is more easily supported and the antenna is geometri geometrically compact. And it also provides minimum loses as the receiver can be mounted directly near the horn. While the disadvantage is that the subreflectors of a cast green antenna are fixed by bars. So these bars and the secondary reflector constitute an obstacle for the rays coming from the primary reflector in most effective direction. However, there is a possibility to avoid the disadvantage of the shadow, as it is practiced, for example, with the antenna of the tracking radar of the sky guard or, or of Orlicon or Contravs AG. So the secondary reflector uh, reflects only horizontally polarized waves. This, uh, the primary reflector with its metallic surface reflects all electromagnetic waves. A special feature, however, is that when a circularly polarized wave is reflected, it has a reverse direction of rotation after reflection. Okay, so the polarization plates, you can see by the antennas of SA, uh, SA8 Gecko, or this is a tracking and command guidance radar system for surface to air missiles next okay and lastly we have the slotted waveguide array so did you know that the waveguide uh, antenna technology has been applied to different space borne missions like sentinel 1 ers 1 or 2 rather sat 1 and sir x or 10. This technology is lauded for its high efficiency, high power handling, and simplicity. Slatted array antennas are popularly used in radar applications, in which case design standards require mechanical robustness and high gains. Because the power transmission of radar antennas is very high, so slat array antennas are preferred alternatives to planar arrays. So a slot of waveguide is used as a microwave radar system. So these types of antennas have a metal surface resembling a flat plate with slots. So these slots are in the form of circular or rectangular holes. So the size of the slot, its shape, and the driving frequency will influence the radiation pattern of the antenna. So these antennas are a half a wavelength with a width that is just a fraction of the wavelength. Okay, so you have probably uh, you have probably watched movies or films with where an airplane's uh, movement is monitored from a distance station or space mission is closely observed from a remote location. So this is the idea behind array antennas. And smashed earlier, array antennas are used in applica uh, radar applications. Radar is a system that utilizes radio waves to calcul uh, calculate the range, velocity, or angle of objects. They are used to detect spacecraft, aircraft, guided uh, missiles, ships, motor vehicles, terrain, and weather formations. To know how a slotted antenna works, you should understand how a radar system works. So the radar system has a transmitter that produces electromagnetic waves, in the radio domain and an antenna for transmitting and receiving signals. It also has a receiver and processor for analyzing the properties of objects. The radio waves from the radio system's transmitter reflect off an object and then return to the receiver 
to pr provide information on the location and speed of the object, while the conventional parabolic antenna uses a reflector for receiving and transmitting. An array antenna has no reflector, so a slotted array emits through its slots. The spacing of these slots is important and usually determined by considering the wavelength used for both transmission and reception. Slot antennas are designed to work like a resonant radiator. This principle likens the slot antenna to a dipole. So the different, main difference is that the dipole antenna has a vertical and horizontal fields, whereas a slot antenna has a rotated polarization. Okay, so here are the pros and the cons of a slotted waveguide array. Next is the other features of a slotted waveguide array. So here are the three. Next is the application. So you will find a slot array antennas on ultra high uh, frequencies and microwaves. Although the original application of slotted array antennas was television broadcasting. Most antennas are now used for frequency ranges ranging from 300 megahertz to 25 gigahertz. Um, some specialized uh, slot antennas called pole or pylon antennas are utilized for broadband applications. Slot antennas are also um, applied for DBS reception. So the best or the co most common application for slot array antenna is a radar antenna. In some cases, uh, slotted antennas are utilized in cell phone stations where they are fed by a array or an array. Okay, so um, my presentation ends here. Thank you so much and God bless.